So we can start then. Welcome to St. Paul's United Church this first Sunday in Advent. Our um, hymn sing this morning is from Voices United and it's number two. And the next hymn is number 20.
welcome once more. This is the first Sunday of Advent in 2023, and it's Sunday of Hope. We thank Reverend Charles for being here with us this communion service. We appreciate you giving your time and to give us communion. And we'll begin by passing the peace. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Are there any celebrations or birthdays? <clears throat> well, we have on November 25th, Barb and Mel Clapson had their 51st anniversary. So happy anniversary. And my sister-in-law, Margaret, in BC, is having a birthday this weekend. So... Um, our daughter, Carmen, will be having a birthday on Wednesday. Who's that? Carmen. Our Carmen. Oh, the Grant's daughter, Carmen, will be having a birthday this week. And... My son had a birthday on Friday. Sharon's son had a birthday on Friday. Jason. Jason. And... My great niece, Daphne, who is in San Diego with her family, had her second birthday on Friday. Oh, and Judy's uh, great niece had a birthday on Friday, her second birthday. Any others? Well, we'll sing happy birthday and a happy anniversary. <coughs> And our celebration, we had 88 people come for our Christmas tea and bake sale, and we raised just over $1,900. So, and there is a bit more baking out there if anyone wants to purchase it. And uh, you can purchase that following the service. Thank you to everyone who helped by working, baking, cleaning up, buying, baking, and anything else that was happened. <clears throat> if you turn to the announcements, some of the announcements that aren't in the bulletin are there's the Fetisac Funeral Chapel and Cremation uh, in Melfort. Is, we're, having, we're sharing with you the viewing details of upcoming 26th annual candlelight Christmas service on Tuesday, December 5th at 7 p.m. on our website. Uh, and it's, there's another, Charles had put up another uh, poster on the bulletin board, so you can uh, check on that. And it's online, so you can watch that. Our candlelight service offers families a time to quietly reflect on memories they hold dear in the hope it offers some peace and comfort this Christmas season. We invite you to mention this at our, can our candlelight service in the announcements of your congregation. Thank you for your time, and please reach out if you have questions. Sincerely, Darren and Leanne Fetishuk. Beth Burwald, Aftercare Coordinator. <coughs> Hopefully I got that right. And uh, everyone is invited for coffee time following the service. It's not just choir. It's anybody who wants to share a time uh, following the service. We have coffee on. Today is Food Bank Sunday. And there are uh, the reverse advent calendar that's on the counter in the foyer. Uh, you can put your name down beside items you want to donate or take a whole calendar and fill it in, bring it in uh, yourself. But there are two sheets, and so if you want to put something down and bring it and put it in the food bank bin. We are still collecting names for the Poinsettia Memorial, and I have, uh, I will be, hopefully getting it printed for next Sunday, starting next Sunday. 
and have it out for a couple of Sundays there. Next Sunday is worship service at 11 a.m. Our December 24th, there will be no morning service, but we will be having a Christmas Eve service at 7 p.m. And if anybody can help uh, with that, please let me know. And I want to thank the men for changing the light bulbs. There's still four at the back that need changing, but it does brighten up the place. Uh, <clears throat> on your, uh, on the back of your announcements, there's an uh, an item about the. Uh, basis of, un of union of the manual establishing an autonomous indigenous church structure. And I'll let you read that. It's, we're going to be voting at the board level on that. But if you have questions, please uh, ask one of the board members. The <clears throat> I just want to, to remember that to please get your year in and don donations in by December 28th. That's the last day I'll be working this year. And uh, if you have questions about that, please let me know. We still need people on the worship property finance and ministry and personnel committee, so please think long and hard about helping out. No, are there any other announcements that I should think of? Please keep in your prayers, Gary and Jean Race and family, Ellen Burgess, Gwen Ratcliffe, Margaret Jean Reed's family, Wayne McDonald's family, Peggy and Dennis Gutchings, Howard Saloff, Joan Kirpan. Hold in prayer all others who have loved ones coping with illness, loss, and loneliness. Let us pray for the many people injured, displaced, and suffering loss due to tragic circumstances worldwide. And the territorial acknowledgement. Creator calls us to live in peace as treaty people. As we gather on Treaty 6 land, grateful for the people, the air, the water, the animals who have lived and continue to live here, we acknowledge that we worship in the traditional lands of Cree, Salto, Stony, Nakota, Dakota, and the homeland of the Métis, knowing that our journey toward truth and reconciliation requires intention, hope, and justice seeking. I invite you to quiet your body and mind. Take a breath. Focus on what you feel. Feel your heartbeat in your chest. Feel the air as you breathe. We are here, listening, waiting, hoping, looking to sense, to feel, to experience the holy. May it be so in this time of worship. Advent has arrived. We enter into the dance of dark and light. Imagine a lantern, black and bold metal, carrying a candle. The light dances with the dark. Darkness shelters the light. 
Light bends and bows to the darkness, and the beauty of the dance astounds us. Light and dark, friends and companions, one cannot exist without the other. And out of the dance of dark and light bursts forth hope, the hope of God revealed. May and hope dance among us, the hope we know through Jesus. And we will sing Voices United, number seven, the first verse, Hope is a Star. A young person's eyes light up when they think about the wonders around Christmas. An older person dreams of a time when empathy and compassion will become the norm. A wise person reflects on the potential for humanity to share life's blessings. And, and we, we gathered, gathered in, in the name, name of Christ, Christ catch, catch a, a glimpse of Advent, Advent hope. hope. Opening hymn for this morning is found in Voices United, Number one, come, O come, Emmanuel.
God of the morning and of the evening, as we rush about our days, often dismissive of your signs, give us pause. So much is out of our control, we feel lost. As we orientate ourselves to your direction, let us become more aware of your silence. <coughs> let us notice your beauty, so that we may move in time with you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And please join me in our prayer of confession. All God of promises yet to come, we are not good at being patient. In this fast-paced world, we want instant results. We are overloaded by information and are unable to separate the wheat from the chaff. We become vulnerable to quick, simple fixes. We focus on ourselves. In our busy schedules, we do not always pay attention to the special people in our lives. Help us to wake up and become aware of what you are trying to show us. Help us to live your vision of transformation in our world. Amen. And hear these words of assurance. As we experience hope, living God, as new paths and fresh opportunities open before us, we experience the peaceful energy of your presence. In God's presence, you are free. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Their next hymn is found in Voices United 713, I See a New Heaven, 713.
Our scriptures today, the first one is Isaiah chapter 64, <coughs> verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins swept us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet, Lord, yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter, and we are the work of your hands. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. And we turn to Psalm 80, part one, in Voices United, 794. Shepherd of Israel, hear us. You will be Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned amidst the cherubim. Shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your might. Come and save us. God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayer? You have fed us with the bread of weeping and given us tears in plenty to drink. You have made a mockery of us to our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Let your hand rest on the one at your right hand, on the one you have made strong for yourself. Then we will forever forsake you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. And our second scripture is from Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will darken and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth 
to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The day and hour are unknown, but about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tell them the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes, suddenly do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Let us pause for a moment of silent prayer. Amen. I've got written on my notes here that something we should really remember, tomorrow is National Cookie Day. (laughs) I think that's an important day. Three weeks till we start getting the sun rising earlier and setting later. That's to remember too. So here we are in this season where we're starting to feel upbeat and starting to look forward to stuff. And what did the scriptures give us? Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down. Stir up your might and come to save us. But in those days after the suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heaven will be shaken. That's really pleasant stuff, isn't it? For this time of year, man. Makes you want to pull the covers right back over your head and go back to sleep again. You know, maybe this will pass. Well, in 2023, as we're rapidly drawing to a close, There's lots of things that are happening out there that I imagine you, like me, ask God, why? Why is human life considered to be so insignificant? Why is division so prevalent? And yet, why is division so tempting at the same time? The writers of Isaiah and the writers of the Psalms and the writers of Mark, I think, had comparable events happening in their lives, but that doesn't comfort us that much. They were just as confused about what is happening around their world as we are in our world. Their words are but a brief glimpse into what they were going through. They didn't find any resolution and they didn't find any pathway out of the dilemma they just kept going and hoping that something would happen now these writings aren't very comforting and some people believe that these writings foretell the future as something that's going to happen if we don't change our ways right now These writings also tap into, I think, what I would call the fear gene that most humans possess. And in today's society, there is a lot to generate fear. Evoking the fear response is also a tried and true method of obedience. I can remember growing up, my dad would tell me, quit that crying or I'll give you something to cry about. (laughs) And he would carry through with that. It wasn't, an, it wasn't an idle threat. Fear 
obtained obedience. He got the obedience he wanted. Besides, all these strange and things happening makes for good movie themes. Have you ever seen how many movies are out there that talk about ends of the world and people suddenly disappearing and stuff like that? I mean, it's, it's quite out there, yes? Well, this style of writing that we read is, is called apocalyptic writing. And it's a style that is meant to be upsetting. It's meant to be unnerving. Today we've got a, a modern style of writing and spoken word that's called rap. Some of you have followed that, some haven't. It um, takes a while to follow it. They've got a lot to say. And it's a variation, I think, on apocalyptic writing, more for the generation of today. It's meant to offer more questions than answers. If we want answers, that's not where you go. And one commentator referred to it as street art, graffiti. Kind of like those paintings that you see on the side of railway cars. Have you ever noticed that? Every railway car, grain car has got all these things on it. Maybe you can decipher them, but I can't, right? It's, it's a graffiti, it's short, it's meant to have a short, vibrant existence. It's meant to shock you. And if it does, they've succeeded. But then it's meant to be painted over again, forgotten and dismissed. Short and sharp. It's meant to grab your attention right now. But after being shocked out of your complacency, out of your normalness, what are you left with? What is changing? What has changed in you? Do you feel any different? If you check with your gut, how does it feel after reading these things, reading these signs? The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Change is happening. The United States Department of Agriculture just released their 2023 plant hardiness zone map, the last one they released 10 years ago. And the new map shows North America two and a half degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the old map. So if you were in zone three before, now you're in 3A or moving up a little more. And how does that affect what you grow, what you plant? Gardening advice nowadays starts first with, well, try it and see. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. What zone you're in really does not matter that much. So things are changing. Nature is changing. But yet at the same time, anybody that plants knows you have to submit to the cycles of nature, those familiar, cyclical things that come around. But now maybe knowing that things have changed, you're open a little bit more to look to see what's happening. We heard from the writer of Mark, and he told us to keep awake, keep alert. Well, the phrases keep awake maybe shouldn't be taken too literally, although the wall-to-wall -wall advertising that we've had for Black Friday and the abundance of coffee shops, maybe we're too much awake. Hmm. But awake to what end? Why are you being awake? To be more busy? To be more tired? To be more worried about what we haven't done? Rachel Carson says, one way to open your eyes is to ask yourself, what if I had never seen this before? What if I knew I would never see it again? Two interesting questions. Many years ago, I attended, I attended a presentation of photographs of Southern Saskatchewan that were taken by a photographer by the name of Courtney Mill. Some of you may have seen his work. I grew up on the Southern Prairie where it was brown and desolate in the summer and white and desolate in the winter. Courtney's photographs were all of sites I had already seen, but yet had never seen them before. My eyes were open to the beauty of the prairie landscape. So today the prairie is just as brown 
in the summer and it's just as white in the winter, but it's no longer desolate. My eyes have been opened to what was there all along. And I think that is the Advent experience. That's what we're going through this Advent time. To see what is already there, yet what we've never seen before. For the season of Advent, for the preparation of Christmas, we are to keep awake, but not to keep awake so that we can do more and become more tired. The discipline is to be alert for the unexpected, to see what's already there but was not seen by us before. It's not to say that we sit back, put our feet up. It's a period where we can refocus on what is around us and what needs our blessing and our presence. We can focus on connecting with those who we have lost contact with over the last year or so. Focus on those who are around us at this time of year, find it hard, find it stressful. And focus on the many, many good things that we have around us, for we do have a lot of good things around us. We lit that candle of hope to start our time together today. And if you find hope hard to find, then just focus on bringing hope to someone else around you. In the days ahead, when we have more hours of dark than hours of light, keep awake. As we head into the season of Advent, may you find moments to be aware of the things that are unpredictable so that you can be startled into new ways to seek the light and to always, always be kind. Amen. Our next hymn we'll find in Voices United 236, Now Thank We All Our God, 236. Thank you. 
be seated. God's plan for all of creation involves us. Let us give of time, of talents, of treasures, so that God's vision might be made real. Please join me in our offering prayer. We dedicate these gifts in the name of our great creator, giving from our hearts to help make possible how God imagines this worth coming to life. Amen. And our communion hymn is found in 466, Eat This Bread, and we'll sing this twice. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to God. And so it begins our annual trek to the manger. We call to mind all that lies waiting for us to attend to. We may find ourselves overwhelmed. We may find ourselves profoundly grateful. But we know, like Mary and Joseph, we can only come one step at a time in whatever condition we find ourselves. We come amid our living, seeking holy communion with you. You, O oh God, are the great Christmas architect. You who hurled the stars into space, created the swirls of our fingerprints so that no two are alike. You make life stir within us, and call us to yourself for new life over and over again. It is you for whom we hunger. We are grateful for these moments of quiet and calm, remembering your life offered in the kindness of strangers, the devotion to friends and family, the comfort of gentle places of your heart. For you we wait. And so it begins again. Your love made known in bread and wine, in the sighs of death, in the cries of birth, in all that life offers to us. You are with us, and we bring the offering of our hearts. When we break open our lives and share them with others on the journey, we understand that bread, broken and shared, brings us Christ's life. bread of our living. When we pour out our lives and share them with others on the journey, we understand that the wine of our living, poured out and shared, brings us Christ's life. Bread and wine remind us that Christ is with us on the journey. Through this meal, we are strengthened to become a community of peace 
in a broken world. We are invited to come forward to share in the bread of living and the cup of our sharing.
Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. God of childlike hope, we thank you for this time and place where we can be together. In our gathering, we have been strengthened and felt the light of your love burning within us. Lead us to live lives marked by truth and help us to boldly carry your light into the world. May we be beacons of hope as we work to change the world. Amen. And our closing hymn is Voices United number nine, People Look East. Into the world we go. We have been fed. We have been challenged. As a faith community, we have been encouraged. In the season of Advent, may we see love acting in this world, and may the world see love acting on ourselves. Amen. <laughs>